All right, hey everybody. Uh, thanks for joining today. This is Tam Lab uh, number number twenty, um, Horizon Unified Access Gateway, or UAG, uh, as we like to call it, um, the certificate configuration. And so we have uh, Brian on the line, uh, who's going to be walking us through this. Um, before we get going, we'll just do our usual uh, walkthrough of a couple slides. Um, first off, uh, down at the bottom of this page or this slide here, you'll see our URL. So if you are so inclined, go ahead and follow that. Um, and you'll get to our SharePoint site. Uh, this is where we keep all of our content. We track, uh, track the labs. Uh, we also have a number of social channels as well, um, Teams, Socialcast, and Slack. So if you feel so inclined, uh, feel free to join, um, start conversation, um, and go back and forth. Uh, most importantly, if you have an idea uh, for a session or you are interested in hosting a session, um, go ahead and, and hop onto SharePoint and um, submit a session idea. Um, we'll, we'll see when that idea comes through um, and, and we'll reach out. And you're not obligated to actually present, right? If you have an idea but you don't feel comfortable um, or you feel like there might be somebody else more suited to do it, um, you're not required to put a name in there, but just at least put the idea down and we can get a sense of uh, what people want. Uh, and lastly, if you have questions, you have comments, something uh, great to bring up uh, for the audience, please feel free, speak up. Um, as it says, it's meant to be interactive and fun. Uh, so that's, uh, that's my little dog and pony. Um, with that, I'll uh, kill um, my screen share. And then uh, Brian, uh, you can take over. Great, thanks Bill. Perfect, yeah, no problem. All right, you're good to go. All right, so let me share this out. Can you see a uh, Visio diagram? Uh, yes, I can. Okay, cool. All right, so um, picking this up uh, two weeks ago on TAM lab number 18, we deployed um, a UAG a couple of times using once the UI and once uh, PowerShell script. And as, as part of that, I cheated a little bit. I had a certificate pre-created that we used um, just to save time and I, Got a handful of questions from folks uh, curious about where that certificate came from and other questions about certificates in uh, UAG. And so happy to come back on here and do um, TAM lab number 20 and then walk through kind of the second part of that. Uh, so like Bill said, any questions, feel free to stop and interrupt. Uh, there's only a handful of us. So uh, definitely want you guys to get something out of this. So if there's a question, uh, just, just stop me. So I drew a little picture here. I actually kind of want to walk through a handful of things. Um, talking about SSL certificates, I, I am by no means an expert on uh, certificate authorities or the right way to do PKI. Um, but uh, I, I will walk through some of the things that, that I've done, whether they're right or wrong. I think one of them is fairly clever uh, and kind of want to focus on sharing that one. Um, so this drawing right here is a um, kind of just a, an outline of what we did on the last TAM lab. We deployed a UAG. Uh, it was called TAM Lab UAG 11, and we pointed it at a VDI environment in my lab, and then we used two-factor authentication, some of those kind of features on the, the UAG. Uh, and so fairly neat. One of the questions that came up uh, was some of the other things that we can configure inside of the UAG. And so uh, I promise we're getting two certificates, uh, but I, I feel it's important to start uh, a little bit uh, before with, with one other feature in the UAG because it's a, it's a feature that I use to actually get the certificate that I'm using in my lab. And it'll make sense here in a little bit. Um, all right, so inside the UAG interface, I'm already logged in. There's a configure button and we just select the configure button uh, and then underneath edge services uh, we configured horizon last time so this was the only part that we bothered to set up but there are three other features that we can do uh, with a uag and the, the one that i've i've kind of looked at a little bit is this reverse proxy uh, set um, settings area and it's the one we'll use today um, i promise it's part of the certificate piece of things 
So when we go in here, there are no reverse proxy settings defined, but we're going to add one. We'll enable reverse proxy. Um, we will call our instance ID TAM lab. And this is just like a unique ID to kind of, you can have multiple reverse proxy configurations and this is just what we name uh, the proxy definition. And then we can tell the UAG to forward traffic to a different host. And so this is going to be an HTTP host. And this is um, just a, a web server that was set up uh, for part of the, the testing. And then uh, we have to put in a pattern that we want to forward. So what this is going to do is if somebody hits the UAG name, and specifies a TAM lab folder, we are going to forward that URL onto this destination, which is just an IIS box. And we'll hit save and close. That was you know, fairly straightforward. But there's one other piece we need to do, and that's over here. Uh, this is that IIS server that I mentioned earlier. And in you know, IIS, I installed on this box, it's just a, you know, add remove features, you check a box that says you want it to be a web server, and it creates this folder structure, uh, inetpub www roots, and in there I created a TAM lab folder that has a default document in it. And so if we open a web browser and we say, you know, on this IIS box, we want to go to localhost slash TAM lab, uh, it'll come up and it'll show us this page. But if we were to try and do HTTPS, it would sit here and kind of try for a while and eventually fail because this web server does not have uh, an SSL certificate on it. There's no, um, uh, there's no website listing on port 443. So it just kind of sits here and says it, it couldn't connect to anything. Uh, but if we try like from my workstation here and we do TAM lab IIS 11 slash TAM lab. It's not a secure site, but it does show up. But what's kind of neat is if we go to uh, TAM lab UAG 11, which is the UAG that we just created that reverse proxy entry on, we can go to slash TAM lab. And, and what you'll notice is it redirected us to a site that is secure because we you know, two weeks ago installed a certificate for this TAM lab UAG on the UAG. So I've got a little bit of a draw in here to kind of show what we did. So traffic hits the UAG over HTTPS and it forwards it as HTTP traffic onto the web server that we set up. So we're secure all the way to here and then from here to here, traffic is forwarded in, in an you know, insecure manner, but you know, we're inside of our network. So what I really cared about was, you know, or let's pretend what I really cared about was having an SSL certificate uh, for you know, the public facing users that are gonna hit this UAG. It, um, so I covered a lot uh, and it makes sense in my head, but I'm gonna stop and see if there are any questions out there. Um, real quick, is uh, UAG, it's a one-to-one -one relationship? Or um, could a UAG provide, do something similar to multiple, um, multiple IIS web servers in this instance? Yeah, so it, it could definitely forward to uh, different web servers, right? So if we cool. go back into our UAG settings and under reverse proxy, if we went in here, we could add another oh. one. Yep, okay, perfect, uh, I missed the add. Got it. Yeah, and, and we're gonna add another one in a second, I promise. Uh, Great. But, but this is more of just a demo to show kind of uh, reverse proxy concepts and yep. stuff. Perfect. And one other thing, it's, it's a great question. Um, one other thing to mention is it's already really forwarding somewhere else. Because if I take this TAM lab uh, folder off, it's still pointing at Horizon. So um, if you hit the UAG and you don't specify a folder name, it's just gonna forward on to Horizon because you know Horizon's already set up and that's 
um, uh, let's see here. I think if we go back to the UAG settings and we dig into one of these things, it, it has a similar thing on the patterns that it forwards. So it, it forwards just uh, backslash, right? The root directory gets forwarded. Uh, the horizon client, the portal and app blast protocol stuff all gets forwarded. Uh, and this is, this is way more complicated than stuff that uh, I've got into in the past. I, I, I want to say this pipe sign means or um, <laughs> because that's how it would work in like a regular expression. So if we went in um, to reverse proxy settings, I'm, I'm assuming we could, if, if we wanted to forward like a different folder other than TAM lab, like we wanted to f forward, um, you know, TAM lab two, I, I think we could put like a pipe sign in here and, and do some of that stuff. Um, but uh, that's, uh, that's a little bit more advanced than, than I am. Okay, okay. so we've got, um, we've got these pieces set up. Um, now we've got uh, another thing that we're going to set up. So like, like most home networks, I've got a router firewall thing and in there I can go in and uh, make, um, uh, make like NAT port forward type entries. And I could say that if something out here on the internet hit the outside, like my ISP, the IP address that I get from my ISP that I want to forward it to, um, to the UAG. And then from the UAG, it's going to forward, you know, some other stuff and whatnot. Um, so I, we didn't rehearse this bill, but, um, how about I stop sharing and we'll let you share and try something for me if, if oh, you don't mind. Yeah, no problem. I, I cheated and I, I set this uh, NAT rule up in advance. And so um, I think we can kind of show this reverse proxy thing a little bit better because uh, I'll give you a URL to try. And then uh, when you hit that, it should, let me just drop it in the chat here. It's going to be, easier. Sure. And you should get an SSL warning, right? That's, that's the desired effect here. Uh, Got it. Okay. So here's the chat. Um, let me just grab that real quick and throw it in. TamLab Enterprise Admins.org. Okay. You want yep. me to uh, go for it? Go for it. Yeah. Okay. It's thinking. It's thinking. If that doesn't work, we may need to put uh, HTTPS in front of it because I. Oh, you did HTTP. Yep. Uh, yep. I did, did not think that through. It's all right. Hey, here we go. So here's your uh, expected error. Yep. And if we look at the certificate. And so what it's saying is that uh, you have received a certificate from my internal CA, right? So I named yep. it ca.example.com. You don't trust ca.example.com. If I were you, I wouldn't because that is uh, only good in my lab, really. Oh, sure. Um, but if you say okay and then hit... Um, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll accept it. Yeah, like skip on past, proceed, even though it's unsafe. You get the okay. horizon thing. If you put yes. slash uh, TAM lab in that URL, um, at the end of it, you should get that uh, short little page that came up that said, you know, this is a test. Hey, look at that. It worked. So um, let me see if I can uh, start sharing again. I'll we go. We'll leave that up just in case we need it. Yep. Okay. Go ahead. All right. So uh, what, what happened there was uh, you hit this outside NAT of my network and it forwarded you to the UAG and the UAG presented you with the certificate from, you know, my internal CA, which, which you don't trust. And it also had, you know, this host name, this TamLab UAG 11 in it. Uh, and that's not the, um, that's not the name I gave you because I gave you a name that actually routes out here on the internet. Got it. Um, so we'll, um, uh, that's good. That, that's, that's the part of reverse proxy that I wanted to cover. Um, 
Now I'm going to jump back over to this web server. Um, and there's, I, I guess, two pieces to this that I wanted uh, uh, to show. The first one being that certificate that, that you were presented by the UHE was something that I had um, uh, pre-created last time. And I'll walk through a little bit here on, on how I went about creating that. And yeah, again, this isn't, this isn't exhaustive, right? Uh, in, in my lab, I have a domain controller. That domain controller is also a certificate authority. Um, and I set that up uh, a long time ago. And I, I honestly would have to go Google how to set up a CA again. Um, I, I found something, it worked, uh, and I moved on. Um, but if I go in here, I can request a new certificate. So I'm on a web server, right? This isn't my certificate authority. Um, I opened an, a management console and I added the certificate snap in, and I'm going in here to request a new certificate. And this should show me um, uh, enrollment policies that exist. I'll go to next. Yeah, here, this is the stage. So inside of my certificate authority, there's a, a, a template that I created a long time ago. The, the template's the piece that um, I, I don't really recall because it's, it's been a while. But I, I know that in a template, you can choose who has the ability to request those certificates. And I've got it set up so that all domain computers can request certificates. So when I added this uh, certificate mm. snap in as the local computer, uh, this certificate is one of the ones that the computer can request itself. I, I've read some things that say this isn't the right way to do this, uh, but this is a super easy way to do this. And I think it is good enough for a lab. Um, but when I go in here and try and pick one of these certificates, it tells me that um, additional information is required uh, to request this cert. And if I click that link, it gives me some more things to type in. So like, um, I need a common name. Uh, the common name, I would have probably typed something like tamlab uag11.lab.org. And I would have added that over here. And then I think I would have probably typed uh, an OU. And I would have probably called this like tamlab and an organization, maybe something like tam. Um, you do a locality, this would be a city. So we'll go to the city I live in, and then we'll do like a state. Oop, uh, here I didn't, I didn't hit add. So locality, then state, typically do abbreviations. So I'm in Indiana, and then I think we do a country, and that's the US, we'll hit add. And then the alternative names, it, um, so a lot of times certificates that you request as a computer account, they do not require any additional information. This one does because I've got it set up to be a, uh, a SAN cert, so subject alternative name, S-A-N. And the cool thing about SAN certs is that you can put additional values um, for DNS. So instead of just doing like uh, TAMLAB UAG 11, Or I could go in and I could, you know, potentially add an IP address, which I think is actually dot 11. I could put in um, a second DNS name as like TAMLAB. Or we'll, we'll put a couple of these in. We'll say OK. We'll say we want to enroll our certificate. I've got uh, auto approval set up. So that if, I, if I request a certificate, the CA just automatically approves it. Again, uh, from what I've read, probably not a, a best practice, but I call it a lab best practice because it's super easy. So now I can go in and I can export this certificate. Um, I can said I wanted to export the private key. I wanted it to be a PFX. Um, and I think that's, that's all I said. I gave it a password. It was just VMware. 
and then it asks me where I want to save things. And I think I probably put it on like my desktop and called it MLab. Uh, got the kernel there. Okay. So we've exported that key. And so now we have it here. And this is the PFX file that I would have specified when we deployed the UAG. And so if I go look at my certificate, the, the PFX, you know, by default has that chain. So it, it knows my CA cert, and then it's got my individual cert. And that individual cert has, uh, oh, where's alternative names? Here we go. It's got all of those names that we entered. And so th this is the type of cert that I would have issued. This is what my proxy server is going to present. Um, and, and that's how I requested it. Um, I, we could probably go into an hour long how to set up a CA so that you could do that machine um, enrollment thing. Uh, but this is kind of just a, a quick way of, of showing where this cert came from. Not a huge fan of this cert uh, because this cert is only trusted by things that are on my network that already know about this cert. So like when Bill did a test for me, he got a warning that this wasn't a good certificate. And, and that's, you know, that's not cool. If you're using like the Horizon client to connect, you have to go into the Horizon client settings and say, you know, ignore or don't prompt on certificates, that sort of thing. And you always have to you know, hit ignore on, on any time you connect, um, which is definitely not ideal. Um, and so that that's where, um, well, I'm gonna pause for a second and see if there are any thoughts or questions on, on any of those pieces. And we take a sip of water. <laughs> yeah. Alrighty. So um, we'll keep going. Um, there's a service out that's a free thing called Let's Encrypt. And so I'm gonna just type that in and go to their website real quick. But it's a free automated open certificate authority. And so you can, uh, they've got a handful of different tools for a bunch of different OSs that you can go in and say, hey, I want this thing to issue me a certificate and it's free. They're typically good for 90 days. Um, but there's, you know, specific things where they'll work. You know, there, there might be a tool that works on, you know, some distribution of Linux. There's a handful of tools that work on IIS. Uh, but as far as I could tell, there were no tools that work on a UAG or a connection server, right? Because those things are, um, uh, at least with a UAG, right? It's kind of a black box. You probably shouldn't log into the console and be installing like little widgets from the internet to request certificates and, and that sort of thing. Um, but there's a, a version of this that does work with IIS, right? So we've got an IIS server here. Um, and so one of the tools, uh, it's just a free thing is called uh, certify the web and it's just like a little windows executable that you can run um, and it will connect to the let's encrypt service and uh, request a certificate for you the only thing that it asks is that you give it an email address so in the settings of it here i've, I've typed in an email address uh, and that that's really the only configuration you need to get this tool started from there, we can go in and say we want a new certificate and we will put it on that default website. And then it asks us for a domain that we want to secure. So that's gonna be tamlab, P-R-I-S-E-Advents.org. We'll add that domain. And that's the only domain that we really need this thing will actually allow us to add more domains to the certificate. So this is the same as the subject alternative names that we did inside the MMC uh, for Windows. All right, so we've got that uh, put in here. And 
what we're going to do is try and test this. And you can see that it's checking a URL to make sure it's accessible. And that URL has this well-known path in it. Um, and so if we go to this www root, uh, this tool created a well-known directory for us that has a challenge in it. And then the challenge ends up with a file. You, if you do this process by hand, you have to change some file names and put specific text in the file, but, but this tool automates all of that for us. But it all starts with validating this well-known directory. And the tool couldn't reach a well-known directory. And the reason is this uh, URL that I entered is my UAG. And it's trying to hit my UAG and ask for a well-known directory on the UAG, which doesn't exist. But if you remember when we were in the reverse proxy settings, we can actually create multiple uh, reverse proxy entries. And what we know that it's looking for is a folder called well-known. And it's actually got a, a leading dot in front of the name. If we go back to uh, so right here, so it's, uh, our URL slash dot well dash known. So there's a hyphen in there. And so what we're going to do is go back to our uh, UAG. This, this instance ID is just so that we know in the console what's going on. And so we're going to put well known in there. The proxy pattern is going to be uh, the slash dot well hyphen known that um, the certify the web is connecting to. And then we're going to tell it to forward things to our IIS server. And so we'll hit save and we'll close that out. And then we'll go back to IIS and we're going to try and do this again. So testing's in progress. It's looking for this config check directory or file. I'm gonna drag another screen over here so I can look at something. could not verify our page. So I'm, I'm thinking, let me, I wanna check one thing here real quick. Um, Bill, when you tried to hit this page earlier and you couldn't get to HTTP, I was yep. a little nervous. Because, That's what I was, uh, <laughs> I was thinking. Well, the, the problem with uh, uh, Let's Crypt is it only utilizes port 80 to do the cert stuff, which is ridiculous, but that's, what my understanding of it is, and it can be challenged because of that. So I'm not certain how to overcome that. Yeah. That. So I think I was a, um, a checkbox away. So let me try this again. Yeah, there we go. So um, hmm. in, in my firewall, I had forwarded, you know, let me go back to my drawing here. I, I had said that 80 and 443 from here would be forwarded to this thing. Um, but when I, um, <laughs> just the way my firewall is, when I add an item that says I want to forward it, there's a checkbox that says whether or not that item's enabled and it's unchecked by default. So I, I just went back and checked the box. So, 80 and 443 now forward to this. Uh, and the, the UAG does a, a pretty good job of like, uh, rewriting traffic. So if it gets something on HTTP, it, it rewrites it as HTTPS. So, uh, Bill, if you try that, uh, that link I dropped in the chat again, uh, without HTTPS, just the HTTP link, it, it should pop up and rewrite you to HTTPS. Uh, yes, it did. Yeah. So, um, I should have checked that when you ran into that first problem, because I, I should have known that that was gonna, gonna bite me. 
anyway, so let's, uh, we'll keep going here. So we're going to request our certificate. And so it's going to do that same, same kind of process it did where it'll put um, a file in this, uh, this well-known Acme challenge and it had a really long string in it. Um, once it checks that out, I think it typically deletes that uh, for me. And so it says the request is complete. Um, so if I go back into, um, actually I'll leave that open. If I go into uh, IIS manager in here, um, what we should see is my website for default website. And I should have done this before we started here as well. If we go to bindings, um, there's still only one binding for port 80. Um, hmm. See, I would have thought it would have put that certificate in there for me. Let's see if there's any. Create the bind. Don't you have to create the binding? Yeah. Because um, without it saying require SSL, it's not going to look at your certs, right? So what, what, what's happened in the past is this uh, certify the web thing created bindings for me. Oh, got it. Um, and so uh, I expected that they would be there. <laughs> um, normally I don't use the default site. I make a new site. Um, but I was uh, trying to make it demo friendly. But let's see here. Let's go back in there and see, uh, see what's going on. Still says no SSL certificate. Let's go up here at the server level. It does have our certificate from Let's Encrypt. So this is all we really need. I honestly don't need the certificate tied to IIS. I, I, don't, um, I don't super care about uh, IIS other than HTTP access to this well-known directory because what I'm more interested in is if I go back to my MMC running this the local computer and I look in the certificate store and hit refresh, Got I should it. see my Let's Encrypt certificate. So just like before, after we created this one and did the export, I'm just gonna go in here and say export and say next. Uh, I'll say, yes, I want my private key. I'll leave it installed on this machine. I'll give it a password. VMware wants a file name, we'll put it on the desktop, we'll call it TamLab uh, LE for Let's Encrypt. All right, so it's on my desktop of this machine. So to be extra lazy, I'm just gonna go from this machine and say TamLab UAG 11. We'll go to, was it 9443, which is the admin interface, and that's HTTPS only. And then we'll log in. All right. So when we configure the uh, the UAG, and, and we did this uh, two different ways in, in F, uh, TAM Lab episode number 18. We, we did it once through the UI in here where we applied an SSL certificate and then a second time we did it through a PowerShell script. Normally I only use the PowerShell script. So like um, I, in the directory where we had our config file last time, actually I still have that so I can just, uh, I can show it. So we had this INI file that had our configuration in it. And in here, we had a certificate specified for TamLab UAG 11. Normally when I do this, it's just my Let's Encrypt certificate um, that's good for 90 days. All right, so we exported that. We're logged into the admin interface. We're gonna go to TLS settings. We're gonna adjust our internet interface to use a PFX certificate that's on our desktop right here. The LE one for Let's Encrypt. Password's just oh, VMware. 
I don't need an alias because there's only one cert in there. We'll hit save. It says it's been applied. So if I go to TAM Lab UAG 11 without a uh, without a port, right? So just the regular, uh, you know, this was working before without an error message. Um, and it would take me to Horizon. Well, now it's telling me that it, uh, this HSTS thing will be the death of me. Um, it, it's saying that my certificate was good and now it's not good anymore. And it doesn't think that I would actually want to go to this website because somebody's probably trying to hijack all of my my goodness in my lab, um, but that's not the case, right? Um, what, what it's saying is if I look at this certificate, um, it's the Let's Encrypt certificate. It actually replaced it. And I don't have this TAMLAB UAG 11 as a name in the certificate we just created. I only have this like kind of public facing friendly name. So I can just delete this stuff in here, right? Um, so that it's tamlab.enterpriseadmins.org. And so now this is a certificate that is from Let's Encrypt um, that's on my UAG. And so I trust it, but the real test is, does Bill trust it? So I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing and let you oh, do uh, I. share again, Bill. Yeah, give me one second. I'm gonna, I'm trying to, I want to see if I can clear HST because I'll, I'll have that same error, HSTS. Um, right. I, I don't know. I, I think since we made it better, you shouldn't have the error. Okay. Uh, it, Let me share my screen and we'll find out. Something that is secure to something that's not secure anymore is when Chrome usually says, no, I don't think you want that. Um, okay. If you had something that was secure to start with, um, or Maybe wasn't I'm okay. secure to start with, I, I think if you hit like, all right. Your control refresh. Control F5. Yep. yep. Here we go. Let's see. Oh. And we, we may need to close out of tabs. It it, it could be uh, Chrome just uh, remembers that this, um, yep. that we've already accepted something. And sometimes it's. There we go. Oh, there we go. Yeah. All right. So I just killed the tab. It says yeah. my uh, connection is secure. Here's my cert. Let's encrypt. And the reason it's secure is because now we're using an internet certificate authority instead of something from my lab. Um, so anybody who hits that URL is gonna get a, uh, this is secure. And if you remove that TAM lab folder name, you'll, you'll get the horizon thing. It'll show that horizon is secure. Um, and so if you, you know, pointed a connection server at that, you know, it would want your two factor or pointed a horizon client at it and it would hit um, and it would ask for, you know, two factor credentials and all that good stuff. It wouldn't complain about the certificate because it's nope. trusted. Yep. That's the, that's the plan. And so uh, this is what I do in my lab. It's a free way to get an internet signed CA cert uh, that I use for horizon without having to like, hack around in the UAG or on a connection server because I just tell the UAG to forward that well-known traffic to IIS. And then I use, you know, tools that exist, you know, all day long for IIS to create my certificate. And I just export it manually and, and reapply it to the UAG. Got it. Uh, so again, customers aren't going to do this. This, this doesn't necessarily help. Uh, customers because they're not going to want a, a 30 day or a 90 day certificate in production, right? That's uh, this is kind of an amateur hour thing, uh, but it works great for a home lab. It costs nothing. Um, and it gives you that, that cert that you don't have to mess with, you know, on your phone or on, you know, wherever that you may run the horizon client. That is fantastic. Awesome. And now uh, UAG real quick. Um, is this something that is uh I mean, it's, is it included with Horizon typically? Can, you know, customers go out and just download it or is it a separate product? Do you have any idea? Yeah, um, so I've got customers using it. Um, it is, uh, it ships as part of the Horizon suite and okay. the Workspace ONE suite. Um, the current shipping version um, as of today is 3.5. In 3.4, they, they did something, um, 
it, that was a one release change that, that didn't exist in 3.3, it existed in 3.4, and it doesn't exist anymore in 3.5. And I hear that it's likely not going to come back. Oh. Uh, but they did a, uh, a thing in 3.4 where the UAG edition that you were entitled to mapped to the Horizon or Workspace 1 edition you were entitled to. So they introduced hmm. like a UAG standard advanced and enterprise. And so if you wanted to do uh, like the UAG uh, doing like two-factor authentication thing, like we demoed last week, you yep. would require UAG advanced or above. It didn't exist in UAG standard. Um, I, I don't know why they changed that, uh, but they, they changed it back in a hurry. And, and now there's just one edition of UAG. Got it. That's fantastic. I know um, I have um, two customers uh, with uh, Horizon environments and, um, you know, to what we've seen here, they just accept in their lab environments, you know, in their, their dev test where they don't necessarily care about SSL having a green bar, right? They just want the functionality. They, they use just self-signed certs or default certs and it's just kind of a mess. So this is super helpful. I know I can start giving them some ideas on, <laughs> on how they could uh, improve their environment. Even if they have to do this every 45, 50, 60 days, whatever, um, they might be in a better spot. So this is great. Yeah, the real trick here is my lab environment. I, I control that firewall and have you know, access from the internet. I would say most customers in their lab, they're, they're not gonna wanna nat something to their lab from the internet, um, which is a thing that... Um, um, Oh yeah, but yeah, you know the what you did with an IIS server, right? The Windows server yeah. running the, you know, if they can just go grab a cert from there, um, you know, if they can do a little prep work with a security team, um, they might be able to, you know, improve security, which would be great. Awesome. Yeah. That's. Um, I think that's really actually. Let me share one other screen because I have oh, one sure. more tab that I. Um, had in my Visio that I didn't get to and might as well share it. So, um, and, and maybe we'll just kind of progress through all of this as a short little recap. So we started with a UAG that pointed at a horizon environment. All of this setup is in TAM lab number 18. Uh, and then you know, we set up a reverse proxy just to show that we could. That was a separate proxy config that pointed to this IIS server uh, just over HTTP. Then we you know, talked about uh, my home lab firewall and how I need to check boxes uh, more often and kind of keep tabs on that. But we were forwarding stuff from the internet to the UAG and we could hit both of these things. Uh, and then kind of where we ended up, we created one more reverse proxy config uh, pointing at that same IIS server. I, I think we could have probably done this a little bit cleaner with you know, some of those like or and you know, parentheses and stuff like they do on the VDI environment side of things. Uh, but for our purposes, you know, we just added a second reverse proxy endpoint uh, and we forwarded that well-known traffic that's needed for the Let's Encrypt CA. And then we, you know, from this IIS server, we exported our certificate and we imported it into the UAG so that all of these things uh, became uh, valid on the internet from a HTTPS perspective. Awesome. That is fantastic. So that's, that's all I had. Unless there's questions, I'd definitely open it up and um, happy to answer any questions um, that anyone might have. The only question I have is on the uh, proxy destination URL thumbprint, if you're utilizing that for all of your reverse proxies or not. Uh, so I am not. Let me pull that up here. I real saw quick. that, but I'm wondering why. Yeah, so I believe that you only need this thumbprint uh, if the endpoint is HTTPS. Um, so, like, if we go into Horizon, where my um, my connection server is HTTPS, I have the thumbprint of this certificate uh, pre-shared, um, but I do not have thumbprints for these reverse proxy entries because it's just HTTP traffic and there okay. is no thumbprint yeah. of, at the destination. Right. 
making sure that it's like, wait a second, I know my reverse proxy stuff, uh, which I have not got particularly working, but I think it's because of the DNS issue, uh, other than the horizon stuff uh, working properly. Okay. Yeah, and um, you know, we could we could prove that out if we wanted to, right? Um, I've, I've got a few minutes, if you guys have a few minutes, but we could go into IAS and we could we could break a few things uh, because we don't have that. Let's do it. That this is a lab. Yeah, that's what this is for, huh? Yeah. So let's say we want to do HTTPS on port 443. We want to use our uh, Let's Encrypt certificate. I think it's this guy. Uh, yep. And we won't do SNI. We'll say, okay, we added that as a thing. So let's go back to um, a web browser. We'll say HTTPS colon TAM lab uh, IIS uh, one TAM lab. Oh, oh wait, wait, that, um, that makes sense. That's what I would have expected. But I, I did something else wrong here. So I, I don't want to use my UAG certificate in IIS. I want, um, I would want an IIS certificate for just this guy, right? So I'm going to, mm -hmm. I'm going to request another new certificate. Um, and it's going to be, uh, I think I have to type all that stuff in gross. Um, oh, well, we got this. So value would be TAM lab IS01. -is. Next time I buy a domain name, it's going to be a short one. Yeah. Um, so then I'll do an organization. We'll just call this TAM. Make another. Uh, I don't know what the minimum bar is, but I've always done most of these properties. Yeah, I think it's city, state, country. <laughs> Why do I always do that? There we go. All right, and then uh, country with a C, there we go. And then we'll say our DNS name is TAM Lab IS01. And we can put um, an IP in here, but I don't, uh, I guess I can look it up. Say, I don't know what IP I used, so. Uh, dot 12, oh, that makes sense. The other one I used was 11 and I'm super creative. All right, so there we go. We'll apply all that. We'll check the box, we'll enroll. It'll give us a new certificate. We'll go back to IS manager. We'll tell it that um, that's the one that we wanted to use for this binding is the IS certificate. That makes more sense. TAM lab IS01. Doo -doo -doo. All right, so HTTPS, and then we'll even do slash TAM lab. Right, so this is a, uh, it's got a cert now. It says this is a test. This is a good cert. That's from my internal CA. If I it's go, good, and it's a good cert because you trust that CA. Yep, th this yep. is yep. This is a member server of my home lab, and it just intrinsically trusts all that stuff. But um, in here, let's let's take close this here, and we'll hit refresh. I kind of would have expected this to break on the TAM lab item because I don't have that thumbprint. And I, I don't think my UAG trusts that CA. It, um, yeah, I don't think it would, but all right, let's see here. TAM lab, slash TAM lab. Yeah, see that did work. That to break. Um, do, do, do. 
and I wonder if it's because I've I've previously installed well, a certificate your, on this. Your thing. destination is HTTP. Oh yeah, there you go. Boom! Look at that. And now, do you need to put the thumbprint in there, or I guess we'll break it? Yeah, I want to break now, it right? first. Um, <laughs> there we go. Mm. We've got a problem, right? Because now there's a uh, SSL handshake problem. And that for sure, so I would have expected at some point this thing. I, I know this isn't like immediate where this stuff will turn like yellow or green or red. Um, but it'll eventually turn uh, color and say that something is broken there. It's not healthy. Yeah. Uh, but the way we can fix that is uh, do tamlab dash is one dot lab. So this is good. We'll go to our certificate. We'll go to the details. We'll get our thumbprint. This is, I think, a SHA-1 thumbprint, like by default in here. Yep. Okay. And then we'll go back. This is what's broken. I really wish this would turn red, but... doesn't really have to show red for us to prove that it doesn't work because like we can go hit refresh on this page and it doesn't work. But we'll go in here and we'll edit Tam Lab anyway and we'll paste in that string. Um, see if it, let me hit, let me hit save. Let me see what happens after the fact here. Cause normally like it'll replace, uh, I, I, Every time I've seen this, it says SHA-1 equals, and then it's two characters in a space, two characters in a space. Um, let's go see if this worked. Yeah, look at that, that worked. <laughs> That's clever. So yeah, uh, I guess we don't actually have to say SHA-1 and put all those spaces in like I did. Uh, no, I've not had every few spaces. Here. Uh, this, uh, the SHA-1, I think typically I, I've run into times when I did not put that in. It uh, said, nope. Uh, yeah, but maybe it just assumes that's what I mean since that's what uh, that's what's yeah. typically going to be there. But yeah, if, without this string, we get a handshake error. With the string, we get uh, you know, a little green connection is secure thing. That's awesome. But yeah, so we could even, uh, we could update our drawing here if we wanted, and we could say that this specifically now is HTTPS from here to here, but not from here to here. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, so. Cool. Neat. I always like doing a little tinkering like that in a lab. It's a, that's why, that's why we have them. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, cool. Anything, uh, anything else somebody wants to bring up? Otherwise, uh, we can call it. All right, I hear crickets. So, um, yeah. Brian, thank you so much um, for, for sharing this. Um, as always, uh, we'll uh, post the recording in any of the artifacts afterwards um, to the site. And again, if, uh, if you have any ideas, um, even if you don't want to do them, but you think it'd be a good idea, uh, go ahead and let us know uh, as TAM Lab uh, leadership or go onto the SharePoint site or any of the social channels and uh, post the idea. Uh, otherwise, again, thank you everybody uh, for your time and uh, have a fantastic rest of your day. Cool. Thanks.